But they said that Jimmy Stewart was very quiet on the set. Um, they used to say, what'd you call him? And I said, I call him, ah. They said, well, I said, well, I couldn't play his pregnant wife and call him Mr. Stewart. And I was so in awe of him, I couldn't call him Jimmy. So I just say, ah. Uh, and if he didn't turn around, I didn't say anything. <laughs> first came to town, I, uh, I really didn't know many people. I had uh, driven here from Florida with my, my Betamax, because I knew I was here to stay. So I brought all my B Westerns and Betamax with me. But while I was in Florida, I had uh, been fortunate enough to have a, uh, a syndicated newspaper column. I was hosting movies six nights a week. One of the nice things was I got to interview whoever came to town and whoever was in the state, and I'd get calls and saying, oh, by the way, uh, there's a, a, a feature film being done down the street, or Frankie Lane's in town, would you like him on your show? And so it, it was just great. And I read that uh, Bert I. Gordon, his initials were big, <laughs> was making a, a fantasy science fiction film called Empire of the Ants. It starred Robert Lansing and Joan Collins and Jacqueline Scott. And I said, Jackie Scott, my God, she's so great. She plays Richard Kimball's sister on The Fugitive. She's in, in so many pilots, she's just great. So I drove down and interviewed her and it just fell in love. And so when I moved to LA, uh, Jackie and her husband, Jean Lesser, who was a, a manager, just made me feel right at home. And she's here today with us to talk about the many Westerns that she's done, Jacqueline Scott. That was so wonderful. I don't want to get up here and go to work. I want to sit there and listen to you all day. <laughs> she's, she's just great. And not only TV, but Broadway, too. And, you know, when I met her, I went, oh, geez, you worked uh, with R.G. Armstrong, one of the great character actors of all time. And she worked with him a couple of times. I, I know he was on Broadway, too. R.G. was. How did you first meet him? I met him somewhere in New York. I did some kind of a little off-Broadway thing with him, and then I guess when I did a Hitchcock was the first time I worked uh, with That him. was a Hitchcock Terror at Northfield, the Alfred Hitchcock Hour. See, I wouldn't remember that. <laughs> I just happened to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Dick York was in it too, but what it had yes. that made it so suspenseful was a score by Bernard Herman, who did Psycho and North by Northwest. Oh, is that good? It's like watching a feature film. <laughs> So good in that. But she made her first television appearance in a Western. It was Sheriff of Cochise. And Sheriff of Cochise was a syndicated series. It ran for a couple of years starring John Bromfield and was very successful for some weird reason after a couple of years and, and 78 episodes, which was two seasons back then. It's got to be 12 seasons now. <laughs> Uh, they changed the name to uh, U.S. Marshal. Jackie did one of each, and both of them were directed by the great Robert Altman. If you don't tell us everything, I'm afraid we're going to have to hold you for investigation. I wasn't in on it. Ben Hardy told me about the job. What job? All I know is that he'd get $5,000 for it, but it wasn't to kill. He said it was a, a soft touch, that there wouldn't be any trouble. Tell us about that. Was that a fast shoot in those days? Two yeah. and a half days. <laughs> That's a fast shoot. When I first got to work, I saw this man wandering. I couldn't find anything or anybody. And so this guy was wandering around, and I said, uh, do, do you know if there's any makeup or wardrobe or anywhere around here? And he said, I don't know, there's a lot going on under a tree over there, so why don't you check that out? <laughs> so I go over, and I thought he was one of the crew, you know. He was very nice, very polite. And then I go to work, and there he is. He's the director. And that was Robert Altman. Yeah. 
because he's known for his his feature films like like Nashville and Mash, where he gives the actors so much freedom to create and bring things to the role. Was he like that on television too? I said. He was one of the best directors, he really was one of the best directors I ever worked with. Um, long before MASH, people would say, who's the best director you ever worked with? And I'd say, this guy that I did a U.S. Marshal with. Well, they'd look at me like I was crazy, you know. And then MASH came out and they realized why I thought he was one of the best directors I ever worked with. And they have a sense, they love actors and they understand actors. And they just watch you until you get in trouble. And then they'll come in and help you out and straighten you out and you can get on with your business, you know. But they're not constantly bothering you, trying to tell you what to do, to, and you'll be better than you've ever been in your life. In 1962, uh, for s s whatever strange reason, there were two shows set in the world of rodeos. One was called Stony Burke with Jack Lord, and another one was called Wide Country with Earl Holloman and, and Andy Prine. Jackie did one of each. And you did the, actually, you did the pilot and the first episode of Wide Country. Yeah. Uh, so the first episode was on Alcoa Presents, uh, an hour-long anthology that, that Fred Astaire hosted that was used as sort of a way to launch series. I did the pilot and the first one of the Virginian. Just did the pilot of the Wide Country. Now let's take a look at Thursday night on NBC. We have a slight program change at 7.30 on Thursday night. Our panel spells out the words wide country, and I'm not quite sure where the prop department got the letters because it's just a matter of days since we arranged to have wide country as part of our schedule this coming fall. This is a show with a rodeo background, or if you prefer, rodeo background. And it stars a young man named Earl Holloman. Before I tell you more about the series, we'd like to show you a little piece of film that shows Mr. Holloman in action with our guest star, Cliff Robertson. Our next contestant will be champion all-around cowboy Mitch Guthrie. Mitch is riding the start of George Marcus' nationally famous rodeo string. If he rides him with the whistle this afternoon, it'll be the first band this horse has been qualified on. Ladies and gentlemen, Mitch Guthrie on the Well, Jackie, could you tell us about the pilot to the Virginian? <laughs> or Jack Ward, I was playing Jack Warden's uh, wife, and Jack Warden was one of the greatest actors who ever breathed. Had a huge career on Broadway, as well as a huge career in movies and television. But the first shot of the show, uh, he was my husband, and some fool had tried to hang him. And so the Virginian had uh, come along and cut him down and carried him into the house and the first shot he comes in and the door crashes open and here is the Virginian carrying Jack Warden in his arms dying and Jack Warden reached up grabbed the Virginian and kissed him right on the mouth <laughs> it was the funniest man I swear when I get 
I can hardly breathe. I'm sick all the time trying to work with it. And of course, the Virginian practically dropped him, you know. <laughs> he was a sweet, wonderful actor. And he played villains all the time, but he was really adept at comedy too, Jack Warden. What a, what a fine actor. Fabulous. You worked on Bonanza also, one of the, the, the top shows of the era with, I think, Pernell Roberts was still on it at that I time. I think I worked. I think the show I did was the last one he did before he quit. What did you do to him? <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> no, uh, um, he said the reason he was uh, stopping, that he wanted to do different things, and he did. He did uh, a lot of musicals. He did The King and I, and I don't know what all else, but he just didn't want to keep playing that same character. And he said, by now... I've made enough money that I will have $25,000 a year for the rest of my life, and anybody can live on $25,000 a year. <laughs> well, as we all know, he was back doing Western soon. <laughs> I next saw him on a gun smoke. <laughs> and speaking of gun smoke, Jackie did eight or nine episodes of Gunsmoke. They were all great, all terrific shows. In three or four of them, her character name was Abelia. And they weren't related. Somebody was, like John Saxon had gotten out of prison. I think The Wishing Tree was the name of that one. Whispering Tree. Whispering Tree. Wonderful story where he's looking for gold or treasure that he had been in prison for, serving his eight years, and, and then coming out to try to find it. All the trees had been cut down or something. <laughs> no, he's a great actor, Couldn't too. Couldn't find uh, the trees. Yeah. Oh, oh, and you did another episode, uh, Home Invaders with Jeremy Slate, and uh, Ken Curtis was in it, and great scenes with you and Ken. Well, I was Ken's girlfriend, so that was a, one of the great moments in my life. Well, and it was probably and one of his best about, episodes, too. Yeah, I'm talking about a sweet, wonderful man. And he and Doc, all the time, they, if they were going to be doing a scene, they were over in the corner working on that scene, figuring out shtick and business. And I mean, they were always there, you know, and they were just wonderful. Everybody on that set, I just... Loved it. Jackie not only did uh, like seven or eight of the hour-long episodes, she also was in one of the half hours, which had been based on uh, the scripts were taken right from the radio and that. Had, had it changed much from when you first went on, when uh, Jim was, was new to the game and it was, uh, everybody was a bit younger than later? No, I don't think so. It was a very consistent, very steady process. The only trouble with that, I worked with Dennis Weaver. And you couldn't work with him. He was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> with all the Gunsmoke episodes, uh, were they uh, a happy set? Because it seemed like a family. Mm -hmm. It was just wonderful. The only thing, if, Andy, if Jim didn't like something, he never, to my knowledge, never argued with anybody. He just, they couldn't find him. <laughs> And then when they settled on what he wanted, he came back. <laughs> well, he like they he tried had... to fire his makeup man. <laughs> Couldn't find him. <laughs> well, that's clout. In many of the Gunsmoke episodes, uh, some were directed by Andy McLaughlin, but Vincent McAveedy uh, did some of uh, the hour-long ones that you were in, and then Vincent later uh, cast you as James Stewart's wife in Fire Creek. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Jimmy Stewart, because he's certainly one of the giants in the industry. Well, one thing I really remember about that movie is I was nine months pregnant. And people would say to me, oh, did they know you were pregnant? And I said, well, yeah, yeah. You, you could see it. <laughs> but I said, I got up in the morning and put my feet over the edge of the bed. My husband put my shoes on. I'd get to work, sit on the edge of the bed, Jimmy Stewart would take my shoes off. So I said, you can't do any better than that. <laughs> now, Stewart and, and Henry Fonda, his co-star in that, who was the, playing the bad guy, they had been in, in regional theater together. Were you privy to any of their uh, scenes together? No. Mm. 
No, I was, uh, I just saw Fon a couple of times and he couldn't get over the fact, you're gonna have to help me now. Uh, I, I blank out on actresses' names and I think it's psychological, but <laughs> uh, who is uh, married to Eli Wallach? Ann Jackson. I look so much like Ann Jackson when we were young. It was unbelievable. People would say, I saw you on television last night. And I'd say, no, you didn't. And they'd get so angry with me. And honest to God, I'd see photographs of her in magazines. I'd say, I remember taking that picture. Well, it wasn't me. That's why I didn't remember. But I'm so fond of, couldn't get over how much I look like Ann Jackson. But they said that Jimmy Stewart was very quiet on the set. Um, they used to say, what would you call him? And I said, I call him, ah. They said, well, I said, well, I couldn't play his pregnant wife and call him Mr. Stewart. And I was so in awe of him, I couldn't call him Jimmy. So I'd just say, ah. Uh, and if he didn't turn around, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funnier than the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> I'd like to uh, ask you about uh, Robert Totten, the director. He did a film called Death of a Gunfighter with Richard Widmark. And there's a bit of controversy around that movie. Could you elaborate on, on that? I don't like to talk about that. That's ugly stuff. They're all dead. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, Widmark didn't like Bob Totten, who I loved. I'd worked with him on a couple of television shows, and he was a fanatic crazy, like yelling and screaming at everybody and running around, but he was a wonderful director. And Widmark hated him and was constantly hovering over him every shot that he did. Um, and he didn't want uh, uh, a... Bob Totten didn't want Lena Horne in the movie, and Widmark insisted on her. And to make a long, long, painful story short, um, he ended up getting him fired. Bob Totten was fired off of that. And um, Don, the wonderful Don Siegel came in to finish the picture. And it was horrible for Don because he had uh, recommended Bob Totten for the movie. Uh, so it was a very, and I went up to, um, the day that he got there, I went up to Don Siegel, who I later did three or four pictures for, but at that time I didn't know him and he didn't know me. So I asked him something about the character and he said, look, he's a very funny man. And he looked at me and he says, uh, I don't know, I just got here. <laughs> well, and that's the first film that uh, they used the pseudonym uh, Alan Smithy, because Don Siegel didn't want to take credit for it, and Bob Totten didn't want to take credit for it, and that started it. I want to thank everybody for being here. Jackie, thank you for being a perfect guest. The Western is America's favorite genre. It's my favorite genre, too. Obviously, it's yours as well. We do want to keep the Western history alive. We love doing the interviews with the actors, the actresses, and all the filmmakers. And a lot of you out there do, too. We're the only weekly series on YouTube that brings these interviews to you. And we'd love to continue them. But to keep us going, we need your financial support. So we've started a Patreon, as so many other programs have been doing on YouTube. We need your support not just as viewers, but as a Patreon financial supporter. So check out to see what we're offering and pick a level for you to join. Any level is good, and anytime you want to send us a comment, that's good too. We love you viewers out there. We love the Western genre. So let's all join together to keep the Western genre alive. Thanks for watching, and thanks for your help.